YouTubers. Welcome back to AZ2 Ozarks. Today I want to share with you my yogurt making recipe, but not just that. I want to share with you from start to finish, from cow to table. And living on a farm, we have been so grateful to have amazing, wonderful neighbors nearby. And one in particular has dairy cows. And only two, but still, they produce quite a bit of milk. And we are able to do a weekly trade for their milk. And so I make sourdough breads. And so sometimes we trade bread and also we raise organic chicken and so sometimes we trade chicken so it just depends on what they like but it's mutually beneficial to everybody so we're going to head over right now they're only about a mile down the road from us and we're going to talk to Taylor about her cows and what makes them special we are over here at our neighbor's farm and we are approaching Lily which is a new cow to them um, and Taylor's running to grab her milking buckets to get ready. So we're just gonna come over here and say hi to this girl. She's actually only been on the farm for a couple days, um, but she was already a milking cow. So she was ready to go. And then we'll let Taylor come over here and tell us about her. Lily likes banana peels. So Louie's going to give her a little treat. She's very friendly. She likes being pet. I don't know that she likes it. She certainly tolerates it. <laughs> she just gobbles down those banana peels. That's a yummy treat. Look at these handsome toms coming to visit us. They are Blue Slate, which is a heritage breed, and they are among the many animals on this farm. And there's a couple of the hens there, a little trio fluttering up, but they're showing us their handsome plumes. Look at them. <laughs> I just love turkeys. I didn't raise any this year, but they were so much fun. Great personality. All right. Hi, Taylor. Can you tell us your cow's name? This is Lily. About seven years old now. And you said that you had you're still working on getting her in and out of this halter here. And what's going on with that? She came from an organic dairy farm, so she was used to going into a stanchion for milking, but we tie up our cows by the halter for milking in the pasture usually. So she's still learning about that, but she's doing really well. Excellent. And she was um, on a machine for milking out there, right? And yes. so how's she adapting to now being hand milked? She's doing really well. I think she may have been hand milked in the past before she was machine milked, but she's doing really well with it. Awesome. Well, we'll follow you wherever you're going. Cool. So before we milk, we go clean off the udder. She seems very gentle. It doesn't look like you have any issues with her kicking at you or anything. No, not really. She does have some cuts on her teats right now. Her calf was a little bit rough on her, so her last owner is pulled their calf off. But they're healing up pretty well. Next for milking, we usually they have to strip out a few squirts just in case there's any dirt or germs at the Mesquite Canal. Amazing. So, do your hands ever get tired? Uh, a little bit. They've gotten better, but at first it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I bet. You have to build up muscles you're not used yeah. to using. And now, about how much milk do you get from her each day? Uh, she is producing about three and a half gallons a day. Usually, you're getting about two gallons in the morning and a gallon and a half in the evening. That's excellent. Some cows are a little bit faster to milk than others because she's so big and produces so much milk. It takes about 20 minutes, half an hour usually to milk her. Okay, and now you had mentioned she was A2A2. What does that mean? 
E2A2 is, the, is a protein in the milk. It's usually considered more easily digestible than the A1 protein in milk. Other people who have lactose intolerance say that they're more easy, it's more easy for them to digest the A2 milk. Absolutely, we have definitely found that. And um, two of our kids, Samantha and Lewis, both have issues with um, drinking commercial dairy. And when we have this wonderful raw milk, they have no issues or stomach problems at all, which is phenomenal. And it's just a testament to how different our commercial products are from fresh, raw, wholesome items we can get from our neighbors. Definitely, that is awesome. We've not tried making cheese with her milk yet, but we've tried making it with our other cow's milk. And we made a, a raw, pressless cheddar cheese so far. Okay. And some ricotta. And we're hoping to try out some more aged cheeses at some point. Yeah, they're pretty intense for making those. I've made um, cottage cheese and like a queso fresca and they were good, but we love cheddar cheese. So I'd love to make yeah. the hard cheese one of these <laughs> days. Too. It just, the aging process and everything seems quite daunting to me. We do make when we have extra cream a raw, sugar-free ice cream that uses maple syrup and arrowroot powder. It turns out really good. We really enjoy it. That's awesome. Well, and I know that they're interested in making yogurt, and so that's part of this video, so they're yeah. excited to have the recipe, and I'll definitely be handing over a starter for them to use for making yogurt. Oh, that'd be awesome. They can jump in on that bandwagon, too. So does the milk go straight into the jars or do you do something first? We use milk filters. We have some that fit into a large funnel. It's the same type that commercial producers use for filtering theirs. So in case there's any hay chaff or dust in there, it's usually pretty good, but an extra clean. Well, thank you so much for showing us how you milk your cow and we are so grateful for having access to your fresh milk all the time. So. Uh -huh. You guys enjoy this beautiful day and get ready for that winter. <laughs> we are back in the kitchen and ready to start the yogurt making part of this video. I will be using a half a gallon of our fresh milk today. And um, if you want to make less, that's perfectly fine. To make more, it may be a little bit difficult to do that in an Instapot. So I kind of think a half gallon is really a great starting point for making this recipe. The yogurt will last quite some time in the refrigerator if you're worried about not eating it quick enough. And so I've had it at least a month in the refrigerator, still perfect quality because of all those live bacteria in it. However, um, you know, you can always start with a smaller amount. Let's get started. First, starting the smallest burner that you have and turn it on to low. Place a heavy bottom pot onto the stove and I add my one half gallon of milk straight out of the fridge or you could use it immediately if you get it straight from the cow. I do shake it up a couple times in order to make sure that I get all the cream out of the jar and so it's well combined into the pot. I use a thermometer in order to test the temperature of the milk and we want to very slowly bring it up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And we don't want to scald the bottom. So using a whisk, I whisk it vigorously and also having kind of a foamy froth on the top of the milk keeps it from forming a skin. And the skin can add like little chunky clumps into your yogurt, preventing it be from being very smooth. So I definitely like to give it a good whisk a couple times while it is warming up. I stay nearby while the milk is warming up. That way I make sure that it has no opportunity to scald and burn on the bottom. So I just keep whisking it periodically while it's warming and keep taking the temperature, looking for that 180 degrees temperature. So once I get to that temperature, I will turn off the stove and allow it to cool back down to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And that does take quite some time, so you can step away and do other things while you're waiting for that. 
Now we are checking to see that our temperature has reduced back down to 115 degrees. And really while it's cooling, I also like to keep some of that foam on top. It helps keep it from getting a skin. It just makes it have um, a creamier finish at the end. And we're really looking like we're about the right temperature here. If it's, um, you want it to just be close to 115, you don't really want it to be over because you don't want it to kill your um, live bacteria. But here we're right about 115, a little bit below, so that's just fine. Now, if you're just getting started with your yogurt, you will add one of your packets of starter culture. And I do get this from Azure Standard. I'll put a link down below. I am an affiliate, so it helps me out a little bit if you order through them using my link, but you would add one packet. I have already started yogurt and I have had it going for a long time. So I just save the last jar when I'm getting ready to make more yogurt. And this one still has quite a bit in it. You can see it there. And so you only need to add about two tablespoons and I'll use my whisk to kind of scoop it out. There we go. And that's plenty and you just whisk it right in. If you're using the starter, the same thing. You just whisk it in until you feel like it's nice and incorporated. Make sure to have your jars prepared that you're going to be putting your yogurt in so you can pour this in right away. We will move over to our jars. I will be using my Instapot in order to make the yogurt. This has been my absolute best results. I tried using an oven, but I can't get it to that perfect right temperature between 108 and 112 degrees. My keep warm setting is 85 degrees and the lowest baking setting is 130. So I tried balancing it back and forth, but I didn't have the best result. And then it's very labor intensive. You have to be sticking around for seven to eight hours in order to keep an eye on it. I don't wanna do that. The Instapot I have and it works perfectly. So in your pot, you want to have about an inch of water in the base. And I use four of the pint jars. And I like to use these blue jars. My neighbor actually gave me these and I love them so much. But when they're in the fridge, then everybody knows that the blue jars mean yogurt. So there's no confusion. I place four jars into the Instapot and that will be perfect for our half gallon of yogurt. Next, I just pour it right into the jars. With all of the jars filled, I place the lid onto the Instapot, locking it in place. It does not matter if the venting is open or closed because this does not build pressure at all. I simply place, uh, press the yogurt and it sets a time of seven hours and begins to work its magic. It will count up from zero and go up to seven hours. And when it's ready, it will beep and it will turn off. It will not keep warm. With seven hours complete, now you need to allow it to just sit about two hours to reach room temperature before you move it into the refrigerator. After two hours of cooling to room temperature, I open up the Instapot and remove the jars carefully from the Instapot. At this stage, you don't want to jostle them very much. You kind of want to handle them more gently. If you shake them up too much, what will happen is the yogurt won't set up very well. It'll be more liquidy in texture, and I prefer the kind of thicker, creamy texture. And so I then put lids on. I really like to use the reusable plastic lids. I 
find that they have a good seal and I think that they're really convenient to use. Then we'll put them in the refrigerator and allow them to cool completely before enjoying it. Now that our yogurt is all cooled off, the only thing left is a taste test. And I wanna show you what our yogurt looks like. So I don't wanna tip it too far, but you can see that it has kind of a solid layer on top. And this is the cream layer on the very top. And it's just beautiful. We'll be scooping it into a bowl. Now you may have noticed that I didn't include any sweetener in my yogurt recipe. And this gives you just a plain yogurt. And then you can go ahead and add to it whatever you like. Now see that cream on top? And then here's the yogurt. It's just beautiful. Now you can use a skim milk if you prefer, if you wanna take the cream off of it and use um, just the, the thinner part of the milk, you can do that and you won't get this thick cream layer. But we really enjoy it and think it's delicious. So now you can add the sweetener of your choice or use it as a plain yogurt. And we really like to use this new natural stevia powder and so we really are trying to avoid sugar in our lives as many people are. And one little packet of this works perfectly for a dish of yogurt. And my kids all love it. So we just empty a packet in there and then mix it in. Some people like to use honey, maple syrup. You could add sugar. Some people just use some jam stirred in. And my kids really like cocoa nibs. And again, the cocoa nibs and the stevia powder are both obtained through Azure Standard. Excellent, high quality products. And I'll put the uh, link in the description below. So a couple little cocoa nibs in there and mix it up. And then we will do a quick taste test. I have my favorite taste tester with me today. And of course he eats this yogurt regularly, but here he is just for the sake of the video. Go ahead and take a bite. That's a big bite. <laughs> so tell our, our viewers what you think of our homemade yogurt. Mm, it's really good. It's really good. So there you have it, folks. This is our recipe for homemade yogurt from start to finish. I hope you found it entertaining and valuable. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to keep following our adventure.